Welcome back to Repair University. If you saw in the last episode, we talked about well bonding procedures and why it's becoming more popular in the collision repair industry. So in this episode, we're actually gonna go through the procedures and put a quarter panel on this car. As you can see here, we've gone ahead and removed all the damaged uh, sheet metal on the quarter panel itself. And what we wanna determine right now, before we go any further, is number one, is there an OEM repair procedure for uh, setting the panel up and getting ready to apply your adhesives? Uh, number one, always look for the OEM repair procedure. If it's not available, what the technician should do is stop for a second and look and look at what's on the car. What we have in this area here is hard and it's a, you know, we're going to call this a structural adhesive. In the other areas here, we have another material that it's obviously soft and this is a weld through seam sealer. A weld through sealer to protect the, uh, the joint in this area from corrosion protection. And in a little bit, we're going to talk about how to properly grind this and move forward. Uh, here, here you'll see our technician is starting to get the car ready for uh, the uh, prep in, in preparation for the adhesive. And he's going to be using a 40 grit uh, grinding wheel. And as he goes around the car, he's going to get all the mating surfaces down to bare metal. And when we talk about bare metal, we want to be very clear that we're talking about removing all the galvanizing. Because should any, any galvanizing be left, it can affect the quality of the bond, it can affect the curing of the adhesive. Uh, the adhesive itself has corrosion inhibiting, inhibiting properties, so don't be concerned about corrosion. The adhesive will take care of that. Uh, as we go through this, you'll see the proper way to do it. You see uh, our technician here is showing you the proper way to prep these panels. Uh, now you see the technician is starting to prep the uh, brand new quarter panel we're going to apply to the vehicle. And again, the same procedure applies here. Make sure all the E-coat is removed. Make sure all the galvanized coatings are removed for the same reason to protect the quality of the bond and there's no damage to the adhesive. Hi everybody. Uh, we're back here this morning. Get, we're going to finish up this car and get it all bonded up, the weld bonding. And we just want to talk maybe real quickly about yesterday where we got the car all ready. We have our, uh, all our pinch welds and uh, our flanges ready to go. They're all clean down to bare metal. And uh, what we're going to do first thing this morning is get the, get the panel over here. We're going to dry fit this panel. Um, Mike's bringing the panel in now and we're going to get it all dry fitted up like you normally would in any other panel or any situation in a dry shop. In a shop. You want to make sure you dry fit it and make sure it's good to go. One, one, thing I, one thing I do wanted to mention here while we're uh, working on this, um, actually this is a demonstration vehicle and normally you would have your deck lid in this area where you'd want to make sure you have good uh, body lines and make sure your gaps are good to go. But right now we just want to get this fit up and uh, check everything out and we'll make sure we can go move ahead with our weld bonding. Okay gang, we've gone ahead, we've got our, our quarter panels on the car, we've got a really good dry fit, everything's fitting up nice, but now we have to make a decision on how are we going to join this sail panel. There's two ways of doing it. We're going to do a bond joint or we can weld it. We're actually going to do a bond joint here today and we need to be careful of, and you'll see this in the instructions for the adhesive, this joint right here, this edge on the quarter panel. You're going to have to do a taper of less than 10 degrees and the way I describe that to people, if you like a good piece of steak, make it look like a steak knife. And then you can bond this together and use a fiber filled filler and we'll have a good joint. If you're not comfortable with that, it's fine to go ahead and weld this shut. This is a decision you make when you're putting the panel on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our uh, material set up here. Uh, on this particular project, we're gonna be using two different proje uh, products. Uh, the first one that uh, Mike's gonna be setting up here is Fuser 806 HD. It's our high definition seam sealer that can be welded through. Uh, it's very pretty simple to set up. It's standard caulking tube. Cut the tip, poke the uh, cellophane seal. You put the extension tip on, and we're just gonna put it into a standard caulking gun, nothing special. 
All right, once you got that ready to go, now we're going to set up the, uh, the actual structural adhesive, which is going to be fused with 108B. Uh, this is a product that is approved by Ford Motor Company for this, uh, and they do you know, recognize this product. So do uh, some other companies like GM and Chrysler. Uh, we have another product called Fuser 112, which will give you a much longer open time should you need to put a large panel on like a roof. Uh, that will give you about a 90 minute open time at uh, 70, 75 degrees. This product here, we're going to have about uh, 40 minutes at 70 degrees. So it's as simple as uh, we do a purge, make sure the plungers are up even and the materials up at the uh, orifice of the tube. Like just putting the mixing tip on, the mixing tip will give you the proper mix. Don't be hand mixing this stuff. All right, we're going to go ahead and start applying the materials. Uh, I'm just going to start with putting the uh, 806 weld through, you know, the sealer on there we can weld through. And the reason we're going to use this one first because it has uh, a much longer open time. There's an area down there that it was welded through. And if you recall, early on, we made a, we kind of showed you where the different materials were in this car. This is a seam sealer area. And directly over top of the tire is going to be a structural adhesive area. There you go. And now Mike's going to do, a, he's going to purge that tip and he's going to go ahead and start putting his structural adhesive on. All right, we now have the panel in place. We have all the adhesive where it needs to be. We got some clamps on it. And now it's time to start the weld, uh, welding process with the process with a squeeze type resistant spot welder. Uh, this is Ron from uh, ProSpot, and he's going to take over and start, uh, start us with the welding and show us how this needs to be done, okay? Okay, and we just have the regular C-arm set up here, ready to go. Before we did this or came to this point, we've done some test panels where we actually applied adhesive and we welded and did some destructive testing so we know we're good to go um, with the settings we have. This welder we're using today is the ProSpot i5 which has uh, several options. You can use it in manual mode, semi-auto mode uh, where you can set up different settings for the um, weld time and the current uh, specifically but we're choosing today to use the auto mode. The auto mode would automatically sense the metals and use uh, and, and measure the thickness automatically so the operator more or less just have to push the button and the welder take over and does the rest. And so here we are ready to go. Okay, another great feature with the i5 spot gun is that now when we have the big extension arm, you can see the welding position of the electrodes are pretty close to each other and able to achieve the squeeze pressure we want. And sometimes it's hard to get in with electrodes that close. So what we have done, we designed a feature that use a double acting cylinder. We push the button on the gun to spread the tips open and now I can get in over hard to reach areas. Okay, so we're done with the welding now and uh, it really went well. We had a few spots where the welder alerted us to say we did have too high resistance across a few, few weld locations, which actually is very good because it helped us alert us when we don't have it uh, grinded off correctly on the back side. So we went in and readjusted that and all the welds looked good. It's always a good idea to visually inspect the job afterwards, obviously, as you can see all around really good welds. We did our destruct, the, the destructive testing beforehand, which was, is also critical, which we recommend you to do. We used the ProSpot i5. Obviously, always use a quality spot weld when we do weld bonding. Weld bonding is a little bit different than the regular spot welding because it's a time restraint on the uh, process. After you apply the adhesive, you just have a certain time before this, this job uh, needs to be done. This, this i5 also have a log, so all the welds we did here was recorded in the log on, on, the, on the welder, which we can, grant, we can look up uh, on the screen, as well as we can download it to a USB and print it and document the job. So, 
We hope this was useful for you. If you have any question at all, never hesitate to contact us at ProSpot.com or myself at Ron at ProSpot.com. We're here to help you. So uh, hopefully we'll see you around and good luck with your next weld job. Thank you. So that's it for this episode on weld bonding. Remember that the vehicle we worked on in this car, we checked the OEM and the product recommendations. So each time that you work on a vehicle, check the OEM, check your products, and check your tools that you're working with. Thanks for watching Repair University.